Stonehenge, perhaps the world's best known Neolithic monument. Why it was built remains a mystery, but four and a half thousand years later, where and how the builders lived is becoming clearer. Over a million people a year come to Stonehenge. Their experience is about to be transformed with a state-of-the-art visitor centre which English Heritage believes will really bring the past to life. Taking pride of place will be three Neolithic huts which visitors will be able to walk into. The prototypes are well underway nearby at Old Serum. Well, what we're trying to do here is uh, recreate three dwellings which were uncovered by archaeologists uh, a few years ago at Durrington Walls, which is about a mile away from Stonehenge. And what we think these dwellings are are where the people who built Stonehenge lived. But what do these dwellings actually look like and how do they function? A team of English Heritage volunteers have been working under the guidance of experimental archaeologist Luke Winter. What was discovered were the remains of several buildings, um, chalk floors, fireplaces and some stake holes in the ground to show where walls had once been. And so what we've been doing is trying to recreate those three buildings. So using the preserved pollens from four and a half thousand years ago, we've discovered that the area had a high proportion of grassland, um, there were domesticated cereals present, there was a large proportion of hazel forest with oak uh, mixed in with it and a small amount of pine um, and in the river below Darrington Walls we know that there was rush and uh, water reeds. We've been trying to put ourselves in the position of Neolithic people. We've been using the right style of tools for that time period and trying to really understand the material properties and the way that those materials allow us to construct. There are only so many solutions you can come up with at the end of the day, and some of those make sense, and so some of those we think would have been used by Neolithic people, and some of those don't make sense and, and wouldn't keep you warm and dry. So this whole project wouldn't be possible in the first place without an incredible team of volunteers. We've had over 60 different people, um, about 20 coming on each day. We've had actually about eight or nine people who have given up nine weeks of their life, just put the modern world on hold and come here for nine weeks to take part in this project. And I think the experience for them has been amazing. Um, they've learnt a, a huge amount about traditional materials and how you can use them. The discoveries at nearby Durrington Walls are being used to help visitors have a taste of Neolithic life. So this is the interior of Building 851 and the volunteers in the last two days have been laying a smooth chalk floor. Um, and again, this is, this is replicating the evidence found at Durrington Walls. The floors are maybe three quarters of a tonne of chalk material. That's all, all been pounded to get the right sort of fragment size and the dust that's required to turn it into a strong floor. It's then been mixed with water and laid into the, into the sort of rectangular shape that was found at Durrington Walls. You can actually get a, a, a very good finish with, with using hands and, and a, quite a wet mix. Um, so if you, if you keep working the surface, then you don't have to end up with fingerprints or, or hand marks. On the original excavation, just to the south of this hearth, there were two depressions found in the chalk floor, uh, and they've been interpreted as knee prints. Somebody kneeling on that spot for uh, repeated episodes, I suppose, maybe lighting the fire or tending the fire. Um, and again, it brings, it's, a, it's a real connection with, with people in the Neolithic. You can, you can start to see the doorways over there, the light you come in, kneel down, prepare your fire or cook on it. A lot's been learnt from the process, but what have the volunteers got out of it? For me it's a sense of community because, especially as I very often work from home, um, you don't get to interact with people so much. So to come here and all be reliant on each other, it makes you realise that in Neolithic times they would have very definitely Ooh. had this strong sense of community yes. Yeah. Especially it resonates with these days when you don't know who your neighbour is or whatever. I saw the advert on uh, the English Heritage website, I think, and I just yeah. thought, yeah, that sounds good, I like Stonehenge, I might be able to use my basket weaving skills, it's going to be fun anyway. I, yeah, yeah, we've met some fantastic people, just had a really, really good time. The highlight is that, a that fantastic building behind us. Yeah. You know, it, it, it's a great space, it's a, it's a really nice organic building. I'm certainly proud to have been involved with it. The point of experimental archaeology is to try and reconstruct the past. And the reason for that is to try and get inside the minds of people that lived four and a half thousand years ago. 
really we only get to grips with the past and the way people lived by seeing where they lived and how they did it. When the new visitor centre opens in December, you'll be able to step into the past for a flavour of what life was like at the time Stonehenge was built. For more details of how to be one of the first to experience the new visitor centre or to volunteer, check the members magazine or go to the English Heritage website.